Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming by, stopping by, hanging out, whatever it is. But thanks for coming by, watching my videos. I appreciate it. And if you're new here and haven't been by before, I'm Jim. It's great to meet you. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today I'm in Luminar AI and I did a video just, uh, I don't know, a couple days ago, whatever it was, about the local masking tool. And I primarily focused on the basic option there. There's also a texture option, and I mentioned that I would come back with a video soon about textures. Here it is. That's what we're talking about in this video. So here's a photo, and the photo started like that. So basically all I did is I went into Composition AI, and I actually just dragged the verticals a little bit to uh, get basically the photo to stop from tilting backwards and to straighten it up. So there it is before and after. And then I went into Pro, and I went into Optics, and over here, I did a little lens distortion as well to remove some of that barrel distortion because um, this was shot with a wide angle lens. So commonly, if you're standing in front of like buildings, it'll look like they're leaning back if you've taken them with a, a wide angle lens. I talked about that in a previous video about composition AI. This video is about the local masking tools. The first thing I want to do though is kind of balance out the light. So it's something I recommend doing even when I'm adding textures to photos. I still like to get that photo look in the way I want it to look. So. This one, I actually went Accent AI all the way to 100, and that helped quite a bit, I think, with the light, but I wasn't quite done. I wanna come over here and warm this up a little bit, so maybe something, you know, maybe something about like that or so. And let's see, I gotta check my notes. I got a little bit of contrast that I'm adding, so maybe something like that. I actually bumped up the highlights a little bit and then also bumped up the shadows a bit more. So I ended up with a photo kinda of like that. Now, that's probably not exactly what I had, but it's close enough. But considering we started with that, with a very dark foreground and it leaning back, it's now straightened up and um, kind of level as if I was on a elevated platform taking a photo of it. Um, and of course, the light's a lot brighter and the colors pop and things like that. A lot of the color pop comes out of Enhance AI because it does more than just brighten a photo. Um, anyway, so that is my base photo. Now what I want to do is add a texture and kind of do some fun things. And so that's where you come down here to local masking. You just click on that and then you've got an add button. And in my last video about the basic masking, or excuse me, the local masking, I talked about basic and I used a few of those. I'm gonna use texture here. So I'm gonna say plus to add texture. And then you have the options here to do the masking, uh, which is, you know, paint it in or, you know, apply it to the whole thing and erase it from certain parts, things like that. But you can do that there. But first you gotta go pick a texture. So I'm gonna click load texture and go find a texture to apply to this photo. Okay, so I load texture and I'm coming over here and my friend Matt Seuss has a texture pack. Um, I'm an affiliate for Matt's texture packs and sky packs. I'll put a link down below if you're interested. It's free support for me. He gives me a small commission if I send traffic his way. But he, he's got a great texture pack that I have and uh, I'm gonna use this texture, this rust patina, because for me, I mean, let's be honest, this is a beat up graffitied old building that's kind of decrepit and rusted uh, kind of stuff just kind of goes well with it in my opinion. So. There's that, and what I wanna do, however, is I want more of that in the sky and less of it in the foreground. So that's where you come over here, and I'm gonna get the eraser brush, and I'm gonna pull the opacity down, and I'm gonna pull the radius up just to make it larger. In fact, maybe even larger than that. Uh, and I'm at opacity 39. I might just go to like, you know, I don't know. Let's try 35. And all I'm doing is slightly erasing the texture from the building. I think the building has a lot going on and I don't really want to cover that up too much with a lot of texture. So um, I like the texture in the sky, but I'm going to get rid of a fair amount of it from the building. As you can see here, it's kind of what I'm doing. I usually, when I'm painting and uh, you know with textures, I'll drop the opacity pretty low. I think that looks pretty good. I've kept 100% in the sky and basically it's kind of bleeding into the roof there and a lot of this area You can't really tell but I like to leave a little bit of texture there because if you erase it completely I feel like you can tell so that's kind of how I use textures and how I think about it with this kind of background now A lot of people use textures for like backgrounds of wildlife and you know other various art pieces different application and opacity and things like that but for this kind of background I mean, rowdy snare and toe flop. I mean, it's just a graffitied mess. I think a little bit of texture coming through, uh, but just a little bit makes sense here. And now in the texture tool, you can change the opacity. Um, I've got it at 50. I could go to 100, but I've already done a lot of masking. So, you know, it's 100 up here at the top in the sky. And then you can see it, it gets uh, reduced here, basically, because I've reduced it with the masking brush. But the opacity is how much of it is visible. Um, 50 is what it defaults to. I think I'm going to leave it there for now. 
you can go do other things and always come back and adjust that later. Now you've also got advanced settings here, and here's where you have a blend mode. And a blend mode can come in kind of handy. Now, there's not really anything that I wanna do, I don't think, a blend mode wise here. You can see as I hover over them that it shows you on the screen what it would look like. Overlay is a popular one. Those colors are really, really vibrant on that, uh, that uh, blend mode, soft light. Um, where's the uh, difference is kind of interesting. Hard light's a little too much. Uh, hue's kind of interesting. You know, I'm just gonna stick with normal. I just think I like normal best, but uh, I, depending on the texture and the photo and all that, it's it's worth experimenting with the blend modes. The other thing you can do is these four sliders will apply to that texture itself. So I can increase the brightness of that texture uh, or decrease it, right? If I wanna do that, which I don't in this photo, but I wanna demonstrate that. You can add contrast to the texture. Texture, that actually looks really good. Um, I like the increased uh, contrast and how that's working. I actually might would come back in with the brush and erase it a little bit more, possibly. Um, you can increase or decrease the saturation of that texture. There it is higher and there it is lower. I'm gonna put that back at zero, just the default amount of saturation. And then hue, where you can actually kind of roll the hue of that texture. So you could get a lot different look um, based on um, any texture, right? So it's kind of got a I'll call that kind of a pinkish blue kind of look. But if I go over here, you can see it's turning green and then it's turning really blue. And here it's turning kind of purple and blue and all that. So keep in mind that you can roll the hue of the texture. So if the texture, if you like the, the texture of the texture, if that makes sense, but not the color, try the hue slider and that might give you some ideas about how you can adjust it. So now I've got that, I think I'm really happy with this, but I wanna add another texture just for fun. So one more time, I'm gonna say plus and texture, and I'm gonna go back into Matt's kit. And this time I'm gonna use this Rust Patina 5. I love this one as well. It's a neat looking texture and that's gonna lay on top. And again, I'm just gonna pull this opacity down because I like how it doubles up in the sky. Again, I don't wanna double it up in the, uh, in the foreground. So once again, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna um, click on erase and my radius is gonna be pretty big and I'm actually gonna lower the opacity. So I could, if I wanted, copy that mask from the previous texture and then paint it here. You can see where you have the copy and paste, although they're grayed out because I haven't copied it, but I could copy it from the previous texture and paste it here. But here I'm gonna go lower opacity. Uh, actually, because I'm erasing, I'm gonna go higher opacity uh, and get rid of more of this other texture. I really like what it's doing in the sky. I don't wanna to do too much of that in the foreground because it's already got a lot going on. And again, this is just kind of a demo, but I like how that's looking. It's a grungy, gritty thing, and a texture just goes well with it, I think, especially considering uh, the base photo just was a bright blue sky. There were no clouds, there's nothing of interest, and I just wanted to fill up that sky with something that had a little bit of grit that kind of matched the foreground. So now I've got two textures applied, and if I just wanna have a little bit more fun, I could say add and go in basic, and then come in here and start to make some adjustments. I may not mask these, I can actually apply these globally. So this is kind of like getting to the light tool, but having many of those same adjustment um, options like contrast, highlights, shadows, uh, things like that, exposure and temperature, right? So uh, I'm gonna see what I did here. I think I warmed it up just uh, maybe just a tiny bit and maybe add a little bit of contrast. And again, this is applying globally, uh, which is okay with me. Um, I'm gonna take the highlights and actually bring them up a little bit and I'm gonna bring the shadows up quite a bit just to get a little bit more visibility. That's not a massive difference. If you look at the before, there it is before I used the basic um, local mask here across the entire photo. Again, I didn't do any masking on this one and there it is after. And I like that it just brings back a little bit more pop because of the contrast, which I also think helps the two textures that are really prominent in the sky kind of come through. And if you look at the before and after, I mean, we've done uh, quite a bit. There's the base photo unedited and there it is with uh, composition AI and optics adjustments and then some uh, AI uh, or no, excuse me, AI accent, some basic light adjustments, and then two textures, and then more basic local mask app applied globally. So keep that in mind, even though it's considered a local mask, I didn't paint it in anywhere, so it applied to the entire photo. So that's something to think about if you wanna come back and do some additional contrast or these kind of adjustments, but without masking them, and you've already used the light tool, you can go do it this way. And now let me show you this sliding window. Here we go. I mean, before and after, this is a massive difference. Brighten the photo, really brought it to life. 
I personally like graffiti. It may not be your thing. That's cool. But mostly I just wanted to demonstrate how the texture local masking tool works. It basically allows you to add a texture image layer. So that gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of power. And that's how it works in Luminar AI, my friends. Hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you really soon. I'll be back with more videos. You guys take care of yourselves and adios.